So, you know, again, Creed 2 coming out next week, mm-hmm. you know, just before Thanksgiving. And judging from how well the first movie did, you got to think, especially now with you being back in the fold, off, that uh, this should be a big box office hit. That's what I hear. Uh, you know, I haven't seen it. I, I'm going to see it tomorrow at the premiere. Uh, from everybody else, including you, I guess, everybody thinks it's a great movie. Uh, the script was fantastic. Um and it has uh, a great father-son stories in it, not just me and, and my kid over there, but, you know, Rocky and his son, uh, Adonis and his father, who he never met, who, who died when he was, when he was, uh, before he was born. And, um, yeah, it's, it's heart-wrenching and also entertaining at the same time. Yeah, and, and Mark, you know, both both you and I are fathers, and, you know, you want to hate, you know, Victor and Ivan Drago in this movie, but there is that relationship that father and son have, and, and they've gone through bad times, and this is their time of redemption, and, and Florian, for you, playing that role, I mean, what was what was it like getting this role and, and, and doing this movie? I mean, you know, getting this role was pretty classic, like uh, auditioning for the role. Mm-hmm. And uh, some auditions went back and forth until I got a call and they said, like, okay, Sly likes you. He wants to do a live Skype auditioning with you. So I had to prepare two more scenes and convinced him. So he flew me into L.A. I had four days of rehearsals with our director, Stephen Capel. And here we are now. I mean, the process then when we started with the whole preparation and the whole shooting was really tough. It was really tough because it was not only physical exhaust, uh, physically exhausting, but also mentally exhausting. Because, like you said before, um, there's a lot of drama going on on the Drago side. Uh, the character's pretty deep, pretty dark. And in order, you know, to play it with uh, with real pain and w- with uh, real emotions, I had to connect to this role with. Um, with uh, negative moments from my real life. And, you know, in order, like, I was thinking about it all the time during the whole process, during the whole shooting. So I was really so much connected to the role that, you know, in the morning when I got up, it didn't change no more. Like, I never turned to Florian back. I always kept being Victor. If uh-huh. that makes sense? Yeah. And that's why it was mentally so exhausting because I was focusing all the time now on the negative moments from my life. Wow, and as an actor, do you need to do that from time to time? As an actor, do you take moments of your own life to be able to to complete a role? Yeah, I mean, everybody has their own way. But if Florian is right, that's what a lot of actors do. And and obviously, especially things from childhood, Mm. old memories, they're still there. You know, when you're a kid, things that they hit you much deeper. So going back to those things usually works uh, quite well. I mean... It's playing Ivan Drago, playing this guy who, who feels like he's misunderstood, mistreated, he's lost everything, nobody understands him, and he's going to get his revenge now, no matter what. That's the guy I play. He has a lot of anger, a lot of frustration. And I've, in my career since 1985, when I was started, when I was Floria's age, I've had a lot of those feelings, you know, of, in, of, of being misunderstood, of of being treated as a big dumb guy who can't speak, you know, and who can't act, who, you know, I've done a lot of movies that didn't do well. I've had problems with my marriage and got divorced. I've had a lot of things happening. I have a lot of injuries physically, and, and I've had a lot of things I could draw on to get to that place of this uh, this pained uh, character that I had to play. And you're right, Florian, every day, yeah. there are tears every day. So after a while, you get used to it, and you just don't, you know, it's no big deal after after about a week or two. Yeah. We we talked about uh, a character that's uh, on the WWE, uh, Drew McIntyre, and I call him a grown-ass man because he looks the part, and he's been through a lot. And I want to let you know, this is kind of a badge of honor. You are a grown-ass man. Because anybody that's willing to put out um, what happened in their career, what happened in their life, how they feel, how people viewed them and overcoming those obstacles. Man, I I admire that so much because it is the realest thing that you can do is to own what happened to you Mm. and uh, be able to live through it and not not get up when you fall down. Thanks, man. You know. Thank One you. thing as I'm listening to 
you know, they're, we are big guys, you know. You, me, Florian over here, yeah. you're pretty big too. Yeah, the <laughs> but, I mean, real men, real men. There's a lot of lot of things, you know, there's a lot of pain and a lot of emotions in men too, not just in women. And guys usually don't get a chance to talk about it because in our society you just aren't allowed to. You're not mm-hmm. supposed to. So I think what I like about Creed too is that it's about, in our, in our story, it's about two big guys a lot of th- with a very intimidating presence who actually have a lot of feelings too. Yeah, and you guys really drawing that out. And I, I, I don't want to give too much away from the movie, obviously, because I was lucky enough to watch it last night. But there's a scene because you talk about spoiler you know, alert. <laughs> it's not, it's not a spoiler by any stretch. But you talk about divorce, and and you know you talk about you've been through divorce. I've been through divorce, and obviously your character in the movie has been through divorce. And there's a scene where there's an old character that comes back, and the look on both your faces, one you know as a, a son and one as as a husband and that look on your face the, the the you know the the face of an awkward moment of of it being just like getting just like punched in the face by yeah. all this emotion and i felt that you know and i think anyone that's been divorced has gone through that where they've had that moment where they've had to go and face that ex once again and i really saw that in your face yeah. i mean a wonderful piece of acting Thanks, by both man. of you Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, yeah, it was a hard, hardcore moment in the picture yes. and in my <laughs> performance. But, like I said, like I said, I hope that maybe some men will watch this picture and, and make will make them feel something, and maybe some they can, you know, be not feel so uh, awkward about expressing their emotions and, and telling people how they feel about mm-hmm. things. Um, You've been real serious, Dave, and. I think that it's time for uh, you know some of the good, like the humor of the movie. Like uh, I love the way that you woke him up. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, the good the Russian old fashioned like, Russian yeah. way. <laughs> it's just a, I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna give a spoiler alert. I'm just saying. I love that, and I, I also love. <laughs> I've seen a couple of videos of I'm y'all still training. That fist. Yeah. I'm still and and in the training, yeah. like y'all were like really punching each other in the stomach and in the chest and like <laughs> I was like what in the hell is going on here <laughs> like yeah. I'm an actor I don't want to be hit in my defense that was that was Dolph's idea so <laughs> not my idea well it was in the moment of insanity in the gym <laughs> you, you've got to for everybody listening please go online look up um, Dolph and and Victor uh, training yeah. and they're they're like just warming up, punching each other, getting ready. Like it, it was a really really good session to see, because uh, you realize that these are grown men that they are they are doing something that I'm guaranteeing you, ninety nine percent of the actors in Hollywood would not do. It wouldn't happen. I'm telling you, you get to see something really really special. Thanks, man. Thank you. It's all about being authentic. Yeah, absolutely. And and Florian, what's it yeah. like for you? Um, you know, being new on the scene. You know, yeah. being you know thrown into the spotlight, doing all this media. I, I'm sure you you you've got a load of interviews to do. I, we've seen you all over. While we've been doing the show this morning, we've seen you on ESPN and doing all these interviews. What yeah. what has this been like for you? It's been an interesting process so far. You know. Um, I never had, you know, so much attention on my person, so it's kind of new, but um, I can deal with it, you know, we did something great here, I still have to get used to, you know, giving so much interviews and that all of the sudden now people on the streets coming up to you, you have never seen them before, but they talk to you like you were friends for Mm -hmm. five years and stuff, and (laughs) it's really crazy, Um, but I'm very happy and very lucky to have Guys like Dolph, like Steven, like Mike in my corner, you know, who are preparing me for the, the, for that kind of attention. And, you know, Dolph, me and Dolph, we have a really, really good relationship, even outside of the, of the movie. We like each other in real life. Steven and Mike, they're really good friends of mine, became really good friends of mine, treated me like real brothers. And they are m- much more experienced in the business than I am. So I'm very lucky to have them in my corner. And, you know, Dolph and all the guys, they're giving me advices all the time. 
And yeah, like I said, I'm very lucky to have. What's the best piece of advice you've been given? The best piece of advice would be probably um, just to stay the way that I am. Okay. Which is pretty much hard for most of the people, because, like I said before, if the attention if the attention is coming towards you and the people and the fame, obviously the money, the women. <laughs> God bless. Yeah, God bless the women. <laughs> I hate that part. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you know, it happens all of a sudden. And Dolph told me, you know, that when he did Rocky IV, his life changed all of a sudden, and it was pretty pretty hard to take for him. But he also told me that, you know, he thinks that I'm a little bit more mature than he was back in the days. And that I'm, you know, I can handle this stuff a little bit better than he did. Maybe because it's a new generation and we are a little bit more, I don't know, developed or something. It's yeah. pretty do hard you, to say. Do you like people overall? Do you like people? <laughs> are you a fun-loving person? Are you like to oh, be no. kind of secluded with the only people that you know? No, no, I, I like people. I, I, I'm a funny guy. I love to smile. You don't see me smiling once in that movie, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm usually a very, you know, very nice guy. I don't, you know, uh, I'm rude to people. If if they're coming up for photos and stuff, I'm trying to, to, to please them as much as possible. So that's not the issue. It's more the, it's more the thing that maybe you think at some point, you, you cannot start to think that you're something better than other people. Right. I mean, I, I accomplished you something and I didn't get anything for granted. Like I worked my ass off to be in this position now for years, for a decade. But still, you know, you're still a human being and you can't see yourself better or, or worse than somebody else. It's it's about, you know, a fair shake and, you know, it's about, you know, human beings are all the same. So if people come up to me and they're happy because... They get motivated, for example. They say, hey, you look like a beast. How did you train? Want to do a photo? Or, or, uh, we're pleased with my performance in the movie. Then I start talking to them, you know, and mm -hmm. just be nice as much as possible. Obviously, I have also other shit to do, but um, uh, <laughs> yeah, I just try to be the person that I, that, I, that I was before that. And Dolph said, this is the most important thing. And I think I'm doing well so far think so well as far as your training is concerned you you look um unbelievable like did you, you were you a big guy that got small or were you a small guy that got big <laughs> well uh i was a skinny kid so um everything that i that i trained for it was hard work so i had to gain a lot of muscles that the i was very lucky that my father was uh, behind me and trained me since I was 10 years old. So training and sports in general is a is a thing in my life since I can think. So I think, you know, it was a natural growing um, until I got, you know, an adult, until I got mature. And I'm still, you know, taking advantage of that, that, I'm, that I started at an early age. So right now, for example... I'm still big, staying big, but I'm not really training right now because we have so much press to do. But my body is not really changing. So I think um, it was the consistency over all those years of training. I, I can see the uh, how much pulling you do yeah. uh, because <laughs> of the the muscles in your upper back and shoulders. Mm. Like, um, what what is the training regimen that you use to uh, to keep your shoulders and back of high so 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 well developed well obviously it's a lot of boxing so i was growing up with boxing uh, and i started weights later like was 16 years old and boxing is you know a training for the body like overall in general it trains even your your, your legs and feet and um obviously the the, the part that is that it is used the most are the shoulders and uh, and the traps because you know mm. from all the punches so i was doing boxing my whole life and on top of that in addition to that doing a lot of weights doing a lot of crossfit doing a lot of swimming by the way i was doing a lot of swimming for like four or five years trying to to work out with uh with your body weight only your body weight until i got used to the, to all those weights and stuff so yeah that's basically it I know you're the brand ambassador for Super Combat. Tell the fans yeah. a little bit more about what you do and what Super Combat is. 
Well, Super Combat is a fighting organization in Romania. And my manager is the president of it. And he also got me the offer for this for this role when I when I auditioned. And it's do you know what K1 is? Mm -hmm. Like with low kicks and all that yep. stuff. Well, yeah. yeah, we're we're the, the, the channel we're, that we're on is a combat. We do MMA, okay. we do wrestling, yeah, yeah, yeah. we do boxing. So yeah, I see. So um, uh, it's one of the biggest organizations in the world right now, and I'm pretty happy to be an ambassador. And we're still trying. You know, K1 is not that popular in in the US. It's more about boxing and MMA. But um, yeah, we 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 keep pushing, and um, trust me. K1 is no joke. K1 is no joke. Uh, getting an elbow to uh, to your cheek is uh, something <laughs> that every man should experience someday. No, no, no thank thanks. you. No more. <laughs> <laughs> no more. <laughs> no mas. You know, you know, Dolph, this is a, a bit, and you've you know, listen. You've been on the scene, the Expendable movies, mm -hmm. and your role with the Expendables was fantastic. Um, yeah, absolutely. But Mark and I are big. Thanks. Mark and wow. I are big fans. Cool. Um, but it's good to have you back in in, in the, you know, the the Rocky family. You know, how does it how does it feel for you knowing that? especially coming out of Rocky 4. And Rocky 4 by the way, most fans would probably pick Rocky 4 as their favorite Rocky movie. What's it like for you being like that villain, being the most hated man on the screen? Well, and back in the day, of course, it was um it was tough. I mean, I was excited to get famous and get a bunch of offers throughout the films, but Obviously, that character was iconic and very powerful on screen. Uh, it's a great film that hasn't aged much. You know, you can watch it now. A lot of movies from the 80s, you know, they look a bit dated, but Rocky IV hangs in there. <clears throat> so, yeah, it was it was a bit, you know, I was just a Swedish kid who was a chemical engineering student who was a fighter, uh, martial artist, and, uh, you know, I had to deal with some negative feedback. Because, like in this film, Florian's character is is a well-rounded character. Mine was kind of, uh, yeah. you know, like in the, this is during the Cold War, so it was a nuclear standoff, <clears throat> and I don't think Americans, spe uh, specifically Americans, weren't ready for some uh, Soviet fighter who was kind of a, you know, who was likable. No, mm -hmm. he had to be a bad True. guy. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so so that character sort of loomed over my career, like a like a ghost to some extent. I've done a lot of other movies. I've done 70 movies, but um, so I did 69 pictures after that one. Uh, yeah. Various sorts, expandables, and, uh, you know, many more to come. And <laughs> Masters of the Universe and Universal Soldier and all of that. But uh, the Punisher, but this particular character kind of stood out as the most powerful. So that's why to do it again now with Florian and with Stephen Capel and, and Stallone and sort of show that he is a real man, you know. He is not just a cardboard cutout. That was really wonderful for me and uh, very satisfying. Is there a movie or a role that you had that oh, got overlooked that you were really proud of, a movie that you were proud of that maybe was overlooked by the public or the critics? Um, no, I can't. Th I mean, my favorite, most memorable roles are, is is actually uh, you know, Rocky IV, this particular film I did, you know, Creed 2, and, and I just did Aquaman as well, that's coming out in December, where I have a really cool role where I play the father, another father, father of, of Amber Heard, who is, uh, you know, who is a, um, plays my daughter, and it's it's also a dramatic role. No, I, I mean, I directed five movies back in the, you know, about 10 years ago, and there was one where I played a rock and roll drummer that was cool. Uh, I, I got to play play drums, you know, in a rock band, and, and um yeah, being a rock star is kind of cool. Yeah, it's a bit yeah, better than being bad. an actor. <laughs> <laughs> not bad. You get more chicks for it. I'm telling you. I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> if we do a sequel, I'll give you a call. <laughs> you can be the singer. They get even more. But the drummers get a lot, too. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. The Drago double. <laughs> are, you ex are you both excited? Like, are you anticipating big returns for Creed 2? Uh, yeah. Well, I don't. I mean, I haven't really followed all the box office tracking and all of that, but they're saying it's going to do quite well. I mean, better than Creed. That's what they say. Yeah. I think it's going to be that movie. 
Especially Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving's too, yeah. like a big time. Yeah, it's the holiday time. People don't want to be with their families yeah. too long. The best way is to say, I got a ticket to a movie to get out of dinner. I mean, that's the best thing you can do. Dolph, you said that you had trials, and I, I do mean that. You got to come to my house for Thanksgiving. You'll know what I'm talking about. But Dolph, you said that, um, you know, when you were. You know, Florian's age when you were first coming up, practically the same age that you went through some trials. Yeah. Um, you think it would be worse now, like with social media, that the way it is, like you can't get away with anything with social media. Yes. Uh, and it was well, the 80s. I mean, the 80s was a crazy time. 80s was good for, you know, <laughs> having fun, late <laughs> night stuff. Uh, it was good for that because, you know, there was no. You couldn't duck. You, nobody could, you know, photograph it with a little iPhone, and you know, you need to haul out a big ass camera with a big you flash, need a flash you need on like it. A pol Polaroid camera <laughs> you can, you to take a picture. <laughs> so yeah. that was good. Lucky uh, you. Lucky you. <laughs> I know. I know. But you know, um, in one way, it was a bit more. I think it was difficult in one way because now. Uh, people, the kids now are smarter. Like Florian's smart. He's, you know, he's read more. He's prepared more. He's more attuned to what's happening in the world. I was a little more closed in coming from Sweden and being engineering and all of that. I, I really didn't know much about show business, so I was kind of blindsided when I got famous, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, kind of hired some of the. I worked with some people that weren't possibly weren't the best for me for for a few years. That kind of. Took me in, a, in a, you know, maybe it's not, not such a good direction career-wise and so forth. But you know, it's all it's all water under the bridge now. I don't care anymore. But you know, I, I think he'll do better, quicker. It's a great compliment. Thank <laughs> I like it. Thank I, you, I'm still. Like, it's, it's good to have a mentor that that <laughs> yeah. sees that. Yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah. Dolph is a true mentor to me. Uh, like I said before, I'm very happy and lucky to have him in my corner. And, and Mark, like I said earlier in the show, I'm still a little upset at Dolph because, you know, I put all my money on Ivan Drago and Rocky IV and that didn't work out. And, and I, I told you. <laughs> hey. Well, I'm putting, I'm putting all my money on Victor for, for next week. In the first fight, not in the second fight. No, the second fight. The second fight's always the big money fight. <laughs> you never learn you never learn some people just never learn <laughs> go ahead <laughs> you guys are funny <laughs> you guys are funny <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious <laughs> and you know and and with and you're right though because you guys are all athletes you know i'm mm. i'm somebody who watches i'm somebody who pays a ticket to watch but you guys are are the ones that are in the ring you're the, you're the guys that are in front of the camera and that and that's a special feeling so i really do hope it and and like you're young mm. and you're and you're eager but like enjoy this time like and, enjoy and, enjoy these moments because you know your career could you you're 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 doing so much in the in the world of combat sports with, with your acting i mean this is the best time of your life man know, you're young and enjoy this enjoy these interviews you know to be young <laughs> and beautiful <laughs> oh what a feeling <laughs> yeah i mean uh, you know i was very focused you know on on doing my job for the movie so um like i said i was so much connecting to the role so focused on doing a great job and you know prove ev everyone wrong because there, there were a lot of doubts mm -hmm. me going into this movie so now i really start to realize what happened now i start to realize you know with the feedback from the people and the reporters that that i accomplished something great here and like you said now is the time that i can enjoy myself you know having with my pops a few tequila shots there you go yeah, yeah. yeah and that's again, the time. again the movie comes out next week november 21st the night before thanksgiving everybody should see it i'm telling you right yeah. now i watched it last night i thought it was phenomenal and mark if i was florian i don't care if it's 30 degrees outside i'm just wearing a t-shirt everywhere i wouldn't I even have well, you got a body like that <laughs> You I'm don't wear a hoodie. You away. know what I'm saying? <laughs> LaGreca wears a hoodie. Maybe Florian I'll do that. Maybe I'll do that. <laughs> should not be wearing a hoodie. Guys, thank you so much. Thank Again, you. Creed 2 comes out next week, November 21st. Make sure you see it.